Hello everyone, Morris here, and today I'm bringing you another Metal Report for X Infinity Origins Season 7, now it's the late epic era, and we have some surprises, I must say, and well here kind of summarizes it all, is that it's Poison, we see Poison and Topaz actually you know, amongst the top, and I must say, okay, of course it's not like every single Poison or Topaz teams, but I would say it's very specific ones piloted by very specific players, of course, like well, the top players, and so yeah, I'm definitely going to look into those. Uh, and this actually kind of illustrate that how parts evolution and of course you know you know skills is play actually quite a big part in uh, X Infinity Origins. So uh, it's it's actually quite encouraging to see that uh you know like the parts evolution all those that actually you know matters uh, and of course skills as well. Uh, but finally, of course, the uh, Perch and Fury Agro is still, I would say, the well, dominant at the top, right? Meaning the most popular at the top. But we do see other things, which is, I would say, the surprise. Okay, so I kind of summarize it here. So let's just get into more of the statistics. And uh, yeah, so just I would say pretty standard really at this point. Uh, so the one thing that I would say is that there are actually about 4K. Um, players compared to last time 4k more players meaning new players coming in and of course most of them worry about 3k or something will be at the egg level um, yeah so that's one thing of course you know there'll be some new players who will progress but most of them probably won't and then the other interesting thing is actually about tiger and this is a time where we actually see a drop in uh, people a number of people in tiger which is pretty interesting because uh, of course, we have a lot more players in Challenger now. A lot of people have moved up from Tiger to Dragon to Challenger. But the interesting part is, of course, that there are not as many players moving up from Tiger than going into Tiger from, from below. So uh, this is where I think, like, uh, you know, I would say the the sta st stable player base, right, already kind of like shifted up, and then there's really not many new players continuing to push into Tiger. So that's, uh, I guess how I see how the player base has you know, evolved over the season. Um, yeah, so now we have roughly close to 4,000 players at Challenger. So if you're not in Challenger, then I would say you probably are not getting significant amount of like AXR reward. Um, so the reward will be, well, there'll still be re some rewards, right, if you're just a bit lower. But I would say if you want to get significantly high or depending on, of course, uh, how you say significant, but uh, I mean, that maybe more than $10, then I think you probably need to be at Challenger. Okay, so let's get into the archetype usage, and here it is, and the, of course, uh, you can see the Perch, which is in purple, and then the Fury Agro, which is in pink, uh, still, we'll say the most dominant, maybe about half, is at the top, and do note that here at the very top, like 23, 100 plus victory stars are uh, the top maybe 15 players all right whereas i guess the next bracket will be let me just quickly check again all right the next bracket will be another 65 players so you can think of it as like a top top 100 all right would be uh, 2200 or above so you can see uh, the surprise is really that you do see poison uh, and i would say this is probably by like you know one player um and then you do see, of course, Anomaly as well, but I think, no, Confuse as well, actually, is getting, uh, you know, doing quite well. Uh, but we do see uh, Pure Damage Story Fighter, that's kind of, you know, uh, getting up there. Uh, I will say the surprise is actually that seeing Topaz, actually, uh, slowly coming up, right, but again, probably by, like, a few players really, maybe like one at the very top here, but also you know a few players really moving up with Topaz, uh, and I'll actually talk more about that. Um, and then okay, the other side of the coin is really about how Sandal, uh, and then also Jinx actually still up there, right? But also Sponge is really like so-called you can squeeze down in that sense, but you don't see as much of those uh, Sandals, Jinx, and Sponge. At the very top compared to below right meaning they might not be as competitive uh, so they, those are popular archetypes but then um yeah they might not be the most competitive uh, compared to you know like perch or fury agro okay so uh, of course being popular has a disadvantage as well is because then people will mostly tech to like against those archetype and of course depending on where you are at the bracket right if you are of course very top then you probably want to tech against 
Perch and Fury Aggro. But of course, if you are at like mid challenger, then you probably, or even a low challenger, you probably want to attack against Sando, Jinx, or Sponge, or Anomaly, or yeah, Feather, even if you're at low challenger. So it really depends on where you are. And okay, so let's just uh, get into the archetype uh, win rates. And here uh, you can see it's, uh, I must say, not much to say. Uh, in the sense that it's, of course, at the low level, it's all pretty even, right? Uh, you know, 50 50 is because uh, given a power level of a team, then if you are stay, stay at a particular place, then you'll be you know 50% win rate. Uh, but I will say the usually I focus on the top, but of course in this case you need to be quite careful about interpreting these values because it could just be by like a few one or even just a few players. For example, poison, right? Uh, it's really only maybe a few players that are at the very top. Of course, they've played significant number of games that they will have a particular win rate, but still you know like it's maybe a very specific kind of team. I would say similarly for uh, maybe Sturdy Fighter or even Topaz here at the top, right? So you can see Topaz in general is not doing too well, but at the top, very specific teams, then maybe they are doing well. And it will be good to actually look at well, why certain teams are doing well uh, in a particular archetype. Okay, so I don't think I'll get into it too much. And then here is the matchup spread for the whole challenger, of course, includes, you know, everyone in challenger including of course a lower challenger mid challenger and top challenger uh, of course check out the blog post if you want to see more breakdown in terms of uh, different victory star bracket but here again showing just a general uh, matchup spread again like a lot of information here so i would just suggest you to either pause the video or uh, go into the blog post and read more but uh, one thing i would want to highlight is that perch is now definitely having more counters uh, multiple reasons, right? That there are more, uh, I would say, matchups that are not above fifty percent. One reason, of course, is that maybe more people are trying out perch, and so there are more not so optimized perch around as well. So that's one part of the reason. I think the other reason, is, of course, that people are taking towards perch now, and now that people are adapting and learning more about it. So something that I would point out is that let's say sustain, right? Uh, some players. Um, don't, might not know how to play against sustain, so that's another thing. Right? Is that perch? There are more new players playing perch, and then new players might not know how to you know, play perch just because it is very specific in the terms of you know it's a combo, effectively a combo of archetypes. So it takes some learning curve in order to learn how to play with perch as well. Uh, so yeah, so I guess. Um, Interestingly, against Topaz, Perch is also not doing too well. Um, partly because, okay, I think uh, the theme here is that any team that has sh uh, shield-based teams are sustained, of course, but also Sturdy Fighter, um, you know, pure damage Sturdy Fighter, 46%. Uh, Topaz, of course, also shield-based in that sense, like with the bumpy and stuff, right? So at 43%. And interestingly, Hotbot, yeah, of course, Hotbot, not many people play it, so statistics-wise, not you know, not many games, but still, uh, looking at a 32 percent win rate for perch against uh, hotbutt so maybe hotbutt could be a potential counter but of course hotbutt does have other bad matchups uh, so yeah so that's probably something that you might want to look at well depending on where you are in the bracket okay so i don't think i'll uh, go through everything it's because it really depends on where you're in a bracket but i do want to focus on uh, two particular teams so in this case i'm going to do a team highlight one is by spam uh, so this well, time of recording this video, I think it's rank two at the moment. It's a poison team uh, that ranked well, rank uh, yeah, rank two. So it's definitely performing well, I must say. And it's surprising is because there are not really many poison teams up there, right? Uh, most of the poison teams is really quite low, uh, and of course, uh, you know. Evolution definitely plays a part, but of course skill as well. And uh, yeah, but I just want to kind of just go through what is going on with this team, and maybe you, if you are playing Poison, you might learn from this. So first is of course the Rosa evolved Rosa that is actually in this case is a Poison plus Sleep plus Reverse Heal team. That's, that's how I see this theme, right? It's the kind of three thing, right? So that's the, uh, the Poison with Sleep. So that's where Ro Revolve Rosa come in comes in. So you definitely need the evolution there. So evolved Rosa, 
Of course, evolve green thorns just for uh, more poison, but also, right, something important is the reverse heal as well. That actually comes into play quite a bit. You can see the reverse, uh, sorry, the evolved stra strawberry shortcake here in the mid as well. Also dealing massive damage with the reverse heal. And the good part about reverse heal is that you can target any enemy, you can choose. And so you can target uh, a specific enemy, which is probably maybe like going down soon, or like you want to just take it down first, or if it's poison, you want to even out the damage, then like there's a very good way to do it. And then of course, uh, with the well, going into the sleep and reverse heal theme, of course, is the triple silence whisper as well, right? Just putting sleep and then also, of course, just doing the reverse heal. Right? It's just a lot of damage just from reverse heal. So do note, uh, you know, some things I, um, okay, of course, to watermelon, but do note, uh, there's no Giller, so that's actually something interesting about this poison team because a lot of poison teams run Giller, but Giller might even be too slow in that sense, um, just because you ha you might as might as well just use the reverse heal to deal more damage or at least you know more specific damage. So uh, for the tail, you can see it's one corn tail just to get extra energy, uh, one potato leaf. Well, you need some shield as well, but also of course for the sleep. And of course the um, uh, the snake there, I forgot what the full name is, but uh, that basically adds poison as well. So yeah, you can see it's mostly all about well poison, sleep, and uh, reverse heal. And the reverse heal probably is actually the main part of this team. So. In terms of runes, okay, I'll talk about the runes. Um, of, you know, Last Wish, of course, is good. Uh, AoE damage uh, is always good. And then, of course, we know Q Poison just to really get more poisons going. I use one more poisons early game. And then Moon Knight Thief actually has multiple purposes. Like one, of course, is slow down opponents, right? but also getting to the Contel turn you know, a bit earlier or at least more consistently as well. Yeah, a bit of healing. Yeah, so this does quite a lot of things. The other thing, of course, is the Gecko um, Mask. On the gecko eyes, uh, just basically you know, putting taunts on itself is always good, right? To so be able to choose or at least uh, protect certain axes, um, and then um, of course the black sage as well. Uh, this is also very important. I right? be able to target any enemy and then just remove rage. Doesn't have to be of course rage or stack, but mostly it's all about rage stack, right? Just slowing the opponents down, either if it's a purge or fury aggro, right? Just slowing them down uh, you know, by one turn probably is quite significant, right? Already, right? Just because then the poison and everything can deal uh, and reverse heal can deal a lot of damage. Uh, so yeah, so that's basically the tech. And then uh, one thing to note is this uh, uh, purifying incense uh, is actually pretty interesting that quite a lot of teams are now taking this is because it's quite flexible right of course against jinx you can use it to purify but also of course you can just use it to uh, in this case um, you know just, just dispel as well so it's i must say a pretty flexible rune that's ah, right charm okay so uh, that's for the poison team uh, and then uh, let's look at the topaz team because we haven't really seen topaz for uh, uh, quite a while well it's quite a while maybe two seasons uh, and it's finally good to see that ah uh, all right topaz can come back of course in this case pretty specific as well as a sturdy fighter uh, topaz uh, in that sense is uh, you need to have the story fighter in order to be, I guess, as competitive. I've seen non story fighter version as well, but let's just focus on this one because it's rank 9. Uh, yeah, so using Topaz at rank 9 is pretty strong. Of course, it is kind of a hybrid with story fighter. You can see the mid here with um, the spiky wing, right? And then also the piranha. So that those are the, of course, um, the you know, pure damage you know, story fighter kind of. Um, you know, scaling card. Of course, Oranda is an interesting pick, I must say, right? It's quite a um, counter meta kind of pick because, of course, if the meta is not full of rage and uh, you know, fury aggro and, and perch, right, then Oranda probably will not be as useful when you might as well choose another card with pure damage. But in this case, Oranda might be a good choice for the meta. And you can see purifying incense as well across the board. 
uh, you know, Gecko Mask again right, for the taunt, in this case on the Toe Pass, so that once you play the Toe Pass, then uh, you can taunt it on itself so that you can you know, just get targeted. So protecting the other axes with Toe, you know, toe Pass, uh, hopefully keep them safe. So that's um, that's that as well, and then uh, there's quite a lot to you know, talk about as well here, right? The evolution definitely helps right? with the bumpy and the um, with the what's the back as well, the timber, right? So just basically adding on, right? Every small thing helps, right? Because the bumpy actually is very significant if you put it in the mid, and then uh, every sh well, card you play, you get. 10, I think, as opposed to 8 shield, and of course that adds up in the Topaz team, right, where you have Nemo's, um, Innocent Lamb, and of course the Square Teeth as well, of course, and yeah, so it's just, uh, with the, the Lumber Shield, all that adds up quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, so that's why the Story Fighter can actually deal a lot of damage. Um, the other kind of theme that hasn't really been explored too much, okay, a lot of things going on in this team, right, one is actually the stealing mechanic, where uh, you can see the piranha like that's a bit of stealing, but also actually leech does this, you know, the stealing as well. And so there's that I think uh, cunning kind of mechanic that scales a bit as well. I think that's a part of that. And actually the vengeance mechanic of the kingfisher. So this kingfisher has never really been played, but this is one of the times where this might actually be good because now the vengeance mechanic increases the damage that's dealt by the next attack and of course it scales very well with story fighter and with like prana or all those like uh yeah, attacks that scales right and even spiky rings right where it when it does the damage it i think steals a particular amount of shield and of course it will you know power up the next attack as well so all that kind of adds up i must say and yeah of course finally you do have the um Black Sage on the square teeth, which is pretty important, is because then you can no, you don't need to use an energy in order to dispel, right? Because sometimes you want, just want to do other things as well, right? Uh, and you can use square teeth to just dispel, so that's pretty good. And of course, uh, yeah. So in this case, the Pre-Rafting Incense is actually more for cleanse, right? Uh, because it's mostly on the shield card. Right, and in a shield card, if you target your own Axie, then it will cleanse. And of course, that's good against things like Anomaly or just um, in general, uh, aggro teams, right? um, Sandals and stuff as well. So, yeah, so that's a rank 9 Topaz team. Okay, so I think that's all I want to say for this video. So just, yeah, enjoy the rest of the Epic Era, and I'll see you in the next video.